Welcome to the TV5 Vault, everyone. I'm Blake Keller. So this Sunday, the Bay City St. Patrick's Day Parade takes place. And in this edition of the TV5 Vault, we go back to 2002, where Eric Gila shows us the history of the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Bay City. Bay City is the kind of community that knows how to throw a parade and have a good time. There were the magnificent floral floats of the Water Carnival Parades of 1929 and 1930. Hundreds marveled at the creations representing towns around Northeast Michigan. And there were the Fourth of July parades that have been held on and off as far back as the late 1880s. Bay City is a town made up of Germans, Poles, and French Canadians. But you keep them inside all winter and they're ready to party and be Irish for a day. And that day is the day of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Bitten by the spring fever bug, the Irish for a day have been flooding into town for five decades. The first parades were informal affairs that only went a couple of blocks. The idea of Jimmy Gates, Jimmy Donahue, Jimmy Noonan, and Jack O'Shea. The late Jim Tanner remembers that first parade in this 1981 interview. We started from the KC Club on Center Avenue, and we had a little old lumber uh, in the wagon, and we marched from the KC Club to the county building on the steps of the county building. By 1955, the first official parade was held. A thousand people marched in it, and 10,000 lined the curb to watch. 1956, twice as many on hand in a snowstorm. And the next year, on a warm, sunny day, 60,000 people are on hand to watch the 110-piece Notre Dame marching band, dozens of floats, and 5,000 marchers. People come from way all, all around this area in Michigan just to see this parade that which starts spring. When they know the St. Pat's spring, uh, parade's going on, they know spring is just around the corner. Irv McEachin is one of two dozen longtime volunteers and one of the proudest. The biggest parade this side of New York because they got so many entries in it. Herb was parade marshal in 1972. It was his favorite year. To walk down center and you're, of course, you're out there all by yourself, you know, and, <laughs> and of course, I never walked straight. I always walked to the side and shook hands with people that always said hi to me. Irv married Rose, the girl next door. She was grand marshal of the 1984 parade. Both work year round for two hours of fun. A lot of fun and hard work. I enjoy both. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it, you just start and bang, it, the parade's over and you're all done. You say, oh, I'll, I wish I could do it again. For many parade volunteers, it's a family affair. Eileen Marshall has the red hair and green eyes of her grandmother, Eileen Had, one of the volunteers in the early days. Well, she started in 1955. She was on, on the board and she was chairman of the Queen's Committee. And uh, we'd always go up to the to the county building to see grandma on the stand. 48 years later, Eileen is following in her grandmother's footsteps. I'll be working on the lineup, and then I'll be going down the street, and I will try to get myself perched in front of the county building, because that's my favorite spot every year. TV5 has always been part of the parade. This film from 1965 shows Kenny Roberts, the singing cowboy. Joined by Hoss and Stuff and Muddy Waters. Always looks like such a fun time there in Bay City. This year's parade will be the 68th annual, so if you're going, look for some of your favorite TV5 personalities marching down Center Avenue and also have fun and be safe. If you have a favorite memory of the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Bay City, please comment below. And thanks again for joining us for this edition of the TV5 Vault. I'm Blake Keller. Until next time.